In this exercise, you'll reset the corridor targets, rebuild the corridor, and then examine how the conditional subassembly affects the corridor model. This exercise continues from adjusting conditional subassembly properties. So let's go about setting the targets and rebuild the corridor. Go ahead and open up your assembly-2c drawing, which is located in your tutorials folder. The drawing contains the corridor assembly that you designed in the previous three exercises. In the drawing, go ahead and click on the bottom viewport and zoom in and select the corridor. After that, go into the modify corridor area and click on the corridor properties. In the corridor properties dialog box, click the parameters tab. Then you'll see a button up at the top that says to set all targets. Go ahead and select that. And in the target mapping dialog box, there's a box right here underneath object name to set all. Go ahead and click that and select existing ground. Then click OK. Go ahead and click OK and then OK again. And you can see how the corridor is modified. Lastly, let's go ahead and examine the rebuilt corridor. Go ahead and select your corridor again. And then go to the Modify Corridor Sections panel and click on the Section Editor. Now currently, I want to go to the Zero Station. So I'll click the drop down and I'll scroll all the way up and click. You'll notice that in this section, we have quite a bit of fill in this situation. And this is happening in the first few stations. If we continue to click. Now, if you remember in the adding conditional subassemblies to a corridor assembly exercise, you attached the daylight bench subassembly to fill with a conditional subassembly. The fill condition at this station is greater than five feet. So the daylight bench subassembly is applied. Let's go ahead and advance to station number two. You'll see that this corridor section shows more of a cut situation. At this station, the cut is less than five feet. So the daylight offset to surface subassembly is applied after the ditch. Go ahead and click to 225. Now in this section, the cut condition is greater than five feet as you specified. The daylight width slope and the retain wall vertical subassemblies are applied after the ditch. You can go ahead and continue to examine all the different sections and you can see how the conditional subassemblies were applied. So that's how you go about rebuilding the corridor and examining the results in Civil 3D.